Hey everyone, so today I want to talk to you about what I consider maybe one of the best kept secrets that's out there for Final Cut Pro users. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best media managers that are that's out there. Uh, hands down, without a doubt. I mean, I love this software. I just came across it maybe about three weeks ago uh, by accident, but it's exactly what I've been looking for and you can run it in conjunction with Final Cut Pro and it just keeps track of all your data, your, your music, uh, any video, uh, photos, and it's great. So I'm gonna go over some of the features here uh, that I really enjoy about this software and that is, uh, to me, it's a game changer, hands down. Let's begin, let me just show you some of the stuff that I found uh, useful within the software. So here is the software itself. So let's just take a look at this here for a second here. Let's blow this up. One of the features here that I enjoy is called the live folder. So let's go, for instance, let's go to my documents here and let's just go ahead and create a new folder. And let's just call this test folder. Actually, let's put it all the way to the, bring it to the top here. Let's do like this. This way it sits in the top there. All right, and I'm going to bring some things inside of it. Um, let's go to photos. Let's go to Brooklyn Art here. Let's grab a couple of photos here, and we're going to bring it inside of that folder that I just created. And it's called test folder one. All right, so I just imported this here, test folder. So if we go back to Keyflow Pro here, and I'm going to say let's create a new live folder. I'm going to go to where I created that folder and hit select. Now you'll see it over here and it says test folder. I have this little icon checked over here. Well, there it is. There is That's the test folder. Now the great thing about this live folder is that any other footage that I bring into this folder, it's gonna automatically update. Let's go to some photos of my buddy Eric here. So we're gonna go ahead and import these in here. So we're gonna grab these four and we're gonna go ahead and import them into the test folder. Now they're inside the test folder here now. So now if we go back to Keyflow Pro and we'll go ahead and refresh. There they are. So that's one great feature. Now you'll notice here that there are some red folders, right? And then some blue folders. Now the red folders means that it's offline. So what I got here is I've got my external hard drive where I keep my library footage. So if I go ahead and plug this in, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. You're gonna see that those are gonna turn blue. So, it recognized my hard drive, and now they're blue, which means that everything's back online. Now, they were still available for me to preview without my hard drive being plugged into it. This is the fantastic part about it, is that my library catalog, let's take a look at what I created. So this is on my hard drive. So let's take a look at my hard drive here. Within my hard drive, I created a Keyflow Pro library. So let's just take a look at here what the size of this thing is. It's 313 gigabytes. That's uh, videos, that's photos, all included inside of there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and eject this here for one second. All right. Now if we go to Keyflow Library, you're gonna see that it's 8.76 gigabytes. So I can still access my videos, but there are proxy version or preview versions of my data. So for instance, I just want to look at some videos here. You guys probably don't want to see this, or maybe you do, but this is uh, Someone my girlfriend's placenta. I was there during the birth. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty fascinating. Let's take a look at some other videos here. Uh, all these videos you can preview without my hard drive being plugged in. What you'll notice here on the right-hand side is that it's saying that the media is offline, but I have a preview generated for this, which means that I don't have to have my hard drive plugged in in order for me to view to see what's on there. 
Here's where the really cool stuff is going to be happening here because we can actually import this into Final Cut Pro and make videos like normal with the previews that we created. So we create proxies with inside of Keyfoil Pro, bring it into Final Cut, and then when we're ready to use the full res version, all we have to do is just swap it out. And it's very easy to do. So there are the videos. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug my hard drive back in. Now as I plug this back in, you're going to notice the media offline turn green. And it's going to say media online now, right? So now I can still, pre you know, it's still previewing like normal for me. We know with the 10.4.4 uh, release of Final Cut Pro, they came out with this uh, extensions. Now with inside of Final Cut Pro, I can open up Keyflow Pro. Now my catalog is right inside here. Something I created here. So let's just say I wanted to go ahead and start with that. I'm gonna go ahead and right click that and hit send proxy video to Final Cut Pro X. So this is just a smaller version of the original size video. The great thing about this is that you're not stuck to what Final Cut Pro, the size that it wants to proxy. You can create your own proxy size within Keyflow Pro 2. If we go to the preferences here, let's go to uh, encoder. Create preview file during import. That's going to create a proxy or a preview file for Keyflow Pro. So this way, if you have an external hard drive, you don't have to carry it with you in order for you to preview it, right? As we saw earlier there, the folders turn red, but you're still able to preview the video. Now here, you can create the resolution of the proxy that you want. You can format the video bit rate and the audio bit rate. Now this probably I should just put pass through. You know, I'm gonna leave it at 64 because I don't need a high quality. So here, this proxy, it's what's gonna be created with inside of Final Cut Pro. So I'm able to create smaller files, still good quality looking videos. Actually, let's go ahead and hit send proxy video to Final Cut Pro. All right. It's gonna ask you which folder, Keyflow overview, and there it is. Let's just shut this down for a quick second here. So there is my video here. There's the resolution. So let's look at some other stuff here. The photos, we just want to look at videos, so let's just click on the video icon there. All right, so let's go uh, ahead and uh, bring this in here. So we're gonna send in a proxy. So the original size of this is 2160 by 3840, but I don't wanna work with a large file like that. With me, I can just send the proxy over and if you look at this thing, the quality is it's great. So let's go ahead and create a project here. So let's go ahead and do test and we're gonna call this uh, proxy. And I want the resolution to be 1920 by 1080 at 2398 frames per second. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna grab these. We're gonna drop it onto our timeline. And there is that. And let's just grab, let's just eliminate that. We don't need that much. And let's eliminate that. And let's eliminate that. And let's just do a little quick transition there. All right, so now we got this going. Let me just slow this down a little bit here. Now this is in real time. Now you can see it hasn't rendered in the background yet, but I've got no issues playing this footage back. Right? 
Now, as you brought that in, you can see that it created a folder here for you, or an event folder, uh, Keyflow Pro 2. So it brought all this footage into that. Now, here's another cool thing. You see these tags? These are tags that were created inside a key flow on the video sources that I used. So you can create a tag here. So let's, let's go to the St. Paul footage here and let's just call key flow pro footage tutorial. It's not really a tutorial, but okay. So we just tagged it and then some annotation stuff here. I can actually Let's take a look here. I can make notes on this. So let's go ahead and just like Final Cut in. And we're going to create an out point here. And let's say this is my favorite. There we go. So I was going to write my favorite part of this video. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do another in and out point over here. And let's go ahead and drop in a keyword. My keywords for the day. Done. Now watch this here. I'm going to go ahead and send this right from Keyflow Pro. I don't have to have the extension open. I'm going to go ahead and let's say send to Final Cut Pro X. Now you can do the original file or you can do the preview file. Let's go ahead and do the preview file. N2, there you go. It kept my keyword, Keyflow Pro footage tutorial. It kept my favorite part of the video here, right? So let's take a look at our favorites here in our smart collection. There it is. This was done with inside of Keyflow Pro. So you can do tons of editing to prepare it for Final Cut prior to it going to Final Cut Pro. <laughs> for me, this is amazing. You'll notice here that it says proxy in the beginning of the video clips. This way you know that you're working with the proxy footage. So let's say you're done editing and you are ready to do your final export, right? You want a high resolution master file export. What we would do is open up Keyflow Pro We're going to drop our Final Cut Pro X project here. Here is our test proxy. We're going to go ahead and drop it in there. And we're going to rename it High Res Keyflow Pro 2 project. Hit proceed into our library here. And there it is. Double click on that. There is our high res intro. And here is our high res footage. Notice it doesn't say proxy anymore. This is the footage. And if you take a look over here on the right hand side, there it is 2160 by 3840. Our intro, 1920 by 1080. How amazing is that? You can work with proxies with inside of. Final Cut Pro until you're ready to export it with your high-res original footage. It just works so well. It's hand in hand. It, I don't, I can't see anybody not being excited about this as much as I am. Um, it's phenomenal. Now I'm going to go ahead and eject my hard drive again. Let's just go ahead and eject We're going to force eject that. I think it's because Final Cut's using the high res photo uh, videos. But all right, so now we ejected that. Here's cool. Here's what's cool about this. All right, so you see my, these folders here went red, meaning that they're offline. I want to take a look at my videos. Now, again, you'll notice in here in the information bar here that these videos are is offline. But. I can still preview all my footage. All right, so let's go ahead and import this one in here. Sent to Final Cut Pro X proxy. You see it exporting. I select my 
There it is. Add it to my timeline. Let's close this. All right, and then when I'm ready to export the high resolution, all I have to do is go ahead and, and plug my hard drive back into the computer and you're good to go. If this doesn't blow you away, I don't know what will. <laughs> I can't be the only one excited about this. And this is something that, again, every Final Cut Pro user should be using. This, to me, is a game changer. And if I wanted to, I can just probably drag and drop. That's another cool thing. I've got my extensions here. I can just grab these files and just plop them on there just by viewing them with inside of the extension. Now tell me that doesn't blow you away. There are so many features here. Uh, it's just, it's mind boggling to me. It's mind boggling that uh, to me, I've been using for Final Cut Pro for quite some time now. Uh, I switched over from Adobe Premiere and I just found out about this software three weeks ago and this software has been out I think for over a year and a half. This is pretty spectacular. If you go over to the App Store, I already paid for this so it's not showing the price but this software is only $49, 50 bucks. It's a no brainer. So guys, don't take my word for it, okay? Don't take my word for it. You can try it out for 30 days. Try it out for 30 days. I guarantee you, you're gonna pay the 50 bucks and you'll be like, there are even more additional features to work with a team of people to be able to have one central hub, one central library where all your key players or people within your office, within your company, for them to share files. I'm gonna let you guys play with that. I don't have a big team to work with. It's just pretty much myself, but definitely something worth looking into. I've barely scratched the surface on it. Guys, you're gonna love it. All right, you guys take care, enjoy.